Hi guys, welcome back to the 8020 BIM channel. Today we're going to talk about why your AutoCAD elements that you've inserted into Revit are not presenting the way you thought that they should. Um, <laughs> I had a colleague of mine approach me this week with this very problem. We had a number of process items come into us via CAD formats that, you know, you can say of that what we will. But when my colleague had linked the CAD data into the Revit environment, he could see it in every view that he didn't want to see it in. And when he had a plan view that was cutting through the geometry, he would still see the top of the geometry and the bottom of the geometry, even though the view planes never touched them. So I thought I'd put this together um, in the hope of helping someone else out. So today's video, um, we're going to discuss why this happens in the first place. Um, what it is about Revit that causes this to happen. Then we're going to go into what my solution has been for this historically. And, you know, I appreciate this course and these topics. So as ever, when I go through my solution, if you have a different idea, a different perspective, make sure to put it in the comment section below. I'll pin anything that is deemed useful to someone else so that you may cite them time when they come to this video, they may find alternative two and three or four. Mm -hmm if it better suits their use case and maybe after the fact I'll create a video on a different suggestion as well. Um, following the solution then I'm going to talk about certain caveats of the solution I was suggesting and where you should just be aware of the, the failings of the solution and what the workarounds that I've experienced uh, to be functional are for it. So when you bring in your CAD data, um, it will present in a way that is not intuitively making sense to you. In this instance, you can see that we have two elements that have been brought in, two platforms with vessels essentially, um, that have been brought into the Revit environment, but they're presenting very differently. And when you go into the 3D view, you realize that they are the same thing. It is the same file that has been brought in in two different ways. And as a result, in the platform level plan, they're presenting differently. So just so you understand the view range that we're working within and why this is presenting quite strangely on the bottom versus correctly on the top. When we go into our view range on the left-hand side, you can see that we have the associated level set as platform and I've set the top and the cut plane both to be 300 mil above the platform level looking down to meet the platform level and no deeper. So it's only a 300 mil band, okay? And just so you can visualize what that looks like, in the west view here, you can see that I have the, the platform level and I've shown you the depth as a hatch of the view range, okay? Uh, this here on the right-hand side or in the plan view, the bottom one, was brought in via the link dialog within the Revit project. So you go insert, link CAD, and then you bring the data in. This here on top was brought in via the solution, the, the method that I'm going to suggest. So the first question is, why is this data on the bottom not cutting at the 300 mil level above the platform? Why are we seeing the top of the vessels? Why are we seeing the bottom of the vessels? Why are we seeing the high level beams at the floor above? It doesn't make any sense. Well, the reason for it is Revit is object-based, and there are rules and parameters assigned to every object within Revit so that it knows how to act in every eventuality. So if you imagine that we are in plan view now, if this was a door family and the view range, that the cut plane of the view range went through the center of the door, the midpoint of the door height, then in plan, there's a parameter that turns on the visibility of the door swing. Similarly, if we were cutting a plan view just above the door, you would not see the door swing because you're not, you, the cut plane is not going through the door to turn on that parameter. So that's, a, that's a basically a yes, no parameter. If the view plane cuts the door frame, then in plan, the detail item that is the door swing turns on in terms of visibility. Another example of kind of like a, a specific family presentation control is a ceiling. So if you have a very deep ceiling construction, it may be a uniform system. 
maybe one system which you want to present as one family but it could be quite deep and within the depth of that ceiling you may have services that you want to present in a, in a view so let's say you create the cut plane for your plan going through the midpoint of the ceiling so here's your ceiling depth and it's going through here because you want to see the services that are going through the ceiling the ceiling family type in Revit does not have a default cut presentation style in plan. That means that even though the cut plane is going through the center of the ceiling, you will not see within the center of the ceiling. You will see the top of the ceiling because there's no cut parameter designated in the ceiling family. I hope that's kind of a description enough to kind of get, understand how Revit decides how things are presented in various views. So in this instance, the CAD that's been brought in is uncategorized. There's no category that has been appended to the CAD that's brought in. It's just showing up in the properties dialog on the left-hand side here as Vessels DWG. So that brings us to the solution. We need to categorize what this is before we bring it into our live project environment. And the way I've done this historically is by taking the CAD data and importing it into a family type. So in this instance, you can see when I select it, it is in under generic models in the properties dialog. So this has been categorized as generic models. So how is this done? You go to file, new, family, okay? Then you navigate to your, through your family structure, whatever, whatever that is. I'm using the UK metric. If you want to use similar, uh, US metric is very same. So here you go down, you select metric, metric generic model you could be floor based wall based whatever you want if it was a an electrical panel that you got in as a CAD file you may wish to use an electrical family of some sort similarly if it was an AHU or HVAC or if it was some uh, generic bike rack or something like that you may just want to stick to generic family the one thing I would say is if you're unsure how you should categorize it categorize it as generic model because that behaves in the most predictive presentation manner for Revit so in this instance, we use the generic model, okay? So I've just opened the family there now, and the way I bring the CAD data in is very simple. You go to the insert dialog once you've opened your new family, and you have very few criteria that you can insert into a Revit family. The one thing I want to highlight is the fact that you cannot link CAD data into a Revit family. You can only import. And that's an important note for one of the caveats I'm going to describe later on. So you go into your import CAD, you select your CAD data, you set the, the constraints that you wish. You can preserve the colors, the layers, all that kind of stuff. Um, you can use your auto origin to origin, or you can place it manually. You as well place it manually in this instance. Uh, place that reference plane if your reference plane. It depends on the hosting of the family. Uh, make sure current view only is not selected because you want to see the 3D geometry. Okay, so you press open once that's done and then you place it in your space. Okay, then you save your family file, save as, and then you load into the project. Okay, then once it's placed in the project, you have to manually locate it where you want it. Um, the family will not work to a coordinate system. You need to place it relative to the building. Okay, and then once you've placed it, it should present in the manner that all generic model families place because you've now categorized the CAD data as a generic model family. So yet again, you can see left-hand side generic models and it's cutting and playing. I'm gonna show you another example of how this presents differently and that's in section. So you can see the section mark that I have down going through the two platforms. And you can see that the actual view depth of the section is very shallow. It's, it's little over a meter. and what that view range is actually covering is three vessels one two three so we should only see three vessels in the CAD data that we've brought in intuitively this is how we understand it's going to present but you'll see that on the right hand side which is the lower platform that i brought in via the link dialog you're seeing four whereas in the one that i created the generic model family out of you're only seeing the three that cut across the view thresholds the additional platform, you're, the, the additional vessel you're actually seeing is this one here. What you're seeing is every vessel down along the entire length of the platform. You're actually seeing it before the section mark was even created. 
not just beyond the endpoint. So this is why directly linking CAD data that is a 3D geometry into Revit can be so problematic because it shows up everywhere in every way, conceivable way you don't want it to show up. And when you want it to present in a certain way, it won't. So the solution, as I stated, is to bring it directly into a family and then manually locate the family. So what are the caveats of this? Where are the failings of this approach that I'm suggesting? And as far as I'm concerned, there are two main failings. The first one is, as I stated, you cannot reload the latest iteration of the CAD data via a linking system within the family itself. So if you look at the lower platform here, I can at any time go into manage, manage links, select the CAD and reload or reload from in order to obtain the most recent version of the CAD data we've received. And it is that quick. It is literally 30 seconds. But because we've had to import this and then manually locate the CAD data, it is merely a stamp. It's a timestamp. It is this one period in time. This is how it presented and this will not automatically update with new iterations. So there is a workflow that I'm going to suggest for that as well. So when you go into your family, you'll see here that I actually have a column and two beams and grids placed. Okay. These were provided by me to the vendor who was giving us the CAD data. And what I said to him is, look, in this instance, at least, it was an existing building and we're tying a platform into these structural members. So we know that these are not changing. These are actually integral to the, the, the integrity of the platform we're designing. So what I said is, you as the provider of the CAD data need to give me a relative position to the building in the CAD that you're providing me with so I can set it out accurately, which is a fair thing to state, is a fair thing to request. They're setting out their data in accordance with the building, so they have to provide us with that setting out. So here are 3D CAD export of known elements, a column, two beams, and the grids. Place them relative to every CAD file that you're giving me in this format. What this then means is that when we get the next iteration of this, so this is vessels, so let's say we get vessels two, vessels three, the workflow is actually then very streamlined for us. What we can do is we go into our import CAD again and we bring in the most recent version and we place the most recent version directly over the known elements that we have given them as the setting out. So we place in plan, the column locates directly over the column, the grids align to each other, and then we go to an elevation view and we drag the beams back down into alignment. And then we know that the position of the new and the position of the old are relatively correct. We select the previous iteration, delete it out, and then we file, save as vessels, you know, December 2019 or whatever date you want to give it. But you make sure to name the vessels family that you've updated with the date so that you could track in real time in the Revit project whether the data that you have incoming is up to speed with the data that you have in the family within the Revit model. Then you just load back into your project, you override your previous version and its parameter values and because you've used the setting out of the column and the beam it should basically reload directly over its same location and so that means that if there's, if there's relative changes of the CAD data to their position of sense of the building, at least you position it correctly in the building every time. You don't have to go and reposition it manually every time you reload it. So that's the workaround for the importing element um, within the family rather than being able to just reload the latest. The second caveat is a little bit more complex and maybe not something that everyone will have to encounter but if you are using some sort of clash detection in an external program so let's say you're using Navisworks you're using Celebre you're using something like this and you need to use clash detection around your newly created family there is a problem and that is that the CAD data will not show up as independent surfaces like the other families of Revit will. If there are elements that are acting in favorably or unfavorably, sorry, with the CAD data within the family, it's not going to highlight 
the connection of let's say the surface of the outside of one of the vessels and a pipe that's running into it it's going to highlight the whole family as one giant block saying that there's a clash here and it won't actually highlight where the interface is of the clash because it's just recognizing it as one block one massive block and that is a problem it depends on obviously what extent of clash detection you're going through and you might be able to just if it's a small item do a manual check around it and make sure everything's okay but in this instance it's quite a large block do you know it's it's seven meters by five meters oh, sorry it's seven or eight meters by four meters or so so there's a lot of potential problems that could arise around that and if you're not running a proper clash detection exercise then you you may end up with variations that have to happen on site so the solution to this yet again goes back to how you request the data from the vendor and in this instance i want the vendor to provide the cad data in two variants or one model with both considerations play in place we have the beam the grids and the columns as we placed from the previous request but also we need to give them a coordinate of a grid intersection at that column and the reason why that's so important so we give them the ordinance we give them respective elevation depending on you know what coordinate system you're using but the reason that's so important is because you can load your Revit family your Revit project sorry into Navisworks you can turn off the family that you know is going to act incorrectly as like one mass and then you can just append the CAD data via the coordinate system directly into the Navisworks file and then you can run a proper clash detection exercise around the specific vessels in question in this instance so that is the second caveat and that is the second workaround as I see it so there are my solutions to why your CAD data is not presenting correctly and what you can do about it uh, as well as the, the, the failings of, of my process as ever if you have a suggestion that is alternative to this make sure to let me know and I will pin it so that other people following along can see it straight up top and, and maybe save themselves 10 or 15 minutes of a video watch and I will probably then, if it is a good solution that someone else suggests, go ahead and create a video about that just for posterity reasons. As ever, I am like, comment, and subscribe. I hope you enjoyed this content. I hope you found it useful. I have previous videos talking about the workflows of CAD data within Revit. So things such as when to link versus when to import. Um, little secret, always link where possible. <laughs> um, how to control CAD presentation within Revit in terms of layer properties and that kind of thing and other such uh, videos. So I'll have them linked in the, the I section there on the video and I'll put a couple of uh, links in, the, um, in the, the breakdown underneath the video as well. So as ever guys, thanks for checking out 8020BIM. I hope you found it useful and have a good day. We'll see you again. Bye-bye.